Hey, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I'm here with another video. Surprisingly enough, I get some questions of how to start up the wood boiler. Um, I never really thought about doing a video, but with the amount of questions I'm getting, I thought I should do it. So what I do every year is I start off with my checklist, and I'm gonna put a checklist uh, so you can download it uh, on my website so you can use the same kind of checklist. So basically, the, I do it in three steps. One, to power up the wood boiler. So what I'm gonna do is you know, turn it on for the season. And the first thing I'm gonna do is check the control panel and the aquastats, which are on this side of the unit. Okay, on this unit, the aquastat is on the side. Now every unit is a little bit different. They have them on the back, the side, the front. But in this case, it's on this side. And I've already powered the unit up. It's already coming up with, uh, in this case, the Woodmaster has LA and a DA alarm. And DA stands for door alarm and low alarm. Uh, what these aquastats were originally designed for is for cooling systems. So, but they work fantastically with the wood boilers just too. It's just you program them differently. So in this case, my aquastat is right. My temperature is reading correctly. Um, so I know that's the first part is done. Check. Uh, then I'm gonna check the fans. Now what I do for that is you simply hit this, in my case, I'm gonna hit the set button. It's gonna give me REST. It's then gonna fire off as soon as I turn on my fan button. So I know the fans are working. Now, just wanna do this uh, just to make sure everything's a go. I'm also gonna be checking my ETC panel to make sure my water level light is on. In my case, that's what I use. Some of them have indicators on the side with little tubes that read the water levels. And um, so in this case, I'm gonna show you the front of my wood boiler to show you the fan. So now I brought you back to the front of the unit. And the reason I did this is because I've actually cut out the main uh, cage here and I put a piece of plexiglass. The reason I do this is to show people how a wood boiler works when they come to my location. So in this case, I wanted to show you, you can see the fan through the plexiglass. And in my case, the Woodmaster has a fan cover with the laminated solenoid that lifts it up and down. And I'll show you. So when you do this, you can see how the fan lifts up, the fan, uh, the fan cover lifts up and the blower goes on. So I know that unit is functioning properly. So then the next thing that you want to check is the laminated solenoid. In this case, it's right here. I can see it's done. You might want to throw a little uh, bearing grease on it uh, to keep it lubricated. You might get a humming sound like a, uh, a, a um sound or something on those lines. Um, to, and that's how you know it's laminated solenoid because it, it's rubbing and it's vibrating within itself. Then the next step on my checklist is, in my case, and a lot of the units have what they call snap disks. And what the snap disks do, they're a surface mount little disk. And uh, I did a video on this, and I'll put that in the link below, is that if the unit gets overheated, it turns off the stove. So there's something going wrong. And usually it's because of not doing your proper maintenance is what causes uh, the overheating. So then we go into the second section of the startup, which I call the cleaning section. And there's three areas to clean which is really quite simple. The exterior of the unit, keeping it clean. I personally like to try to keep it as clean as possible. I did kind of a quick job here. It's freezing out here right now. So I did it real rudimentary and clean. You have the water jacket and there's a couple ways to clean that. You can use a, a flush or a cleaner that I sell actually. It's CF205 with some white vinegar. And um, that's a good way to clean the water jacket. And then you've got the inside of the burn chamber, which you're gonna clean off the creosol and all that stuff that you can reach I really don't worry about the inside of the burn chamber. It's really not that important. And then we go into the maintenance of the wood boiler. So once you've done all these things, then I make sure all the maintenance is done. In my case, you got the water treatment. You make sure the, you know, the conditioner or scale or rust inhibitor or boiler treatment's in the unit. You want to make sure your fan covers, in my case, are nice and new and clean. Um, even though they look fine, you still want to replace them yearly. And I encourage you to follow that because everybody's like, oh, they look fine. But if they fail and they're made out of rubber, so they lose their elasticity, so they don't make a nice seal on the fan, you'll start going through your fans uh, because they'll stop working because the creosol builds up in the fan because the, the flapper's not getting a nice clean seal on the fan and air's flowing through back and forth, which is putting creosol in the fan, which makes the fans go bad prematurely. If they stick open or fail, your unit boils and it overheats the unit. So that's catastrophic failure. And you're gonna spend about $1,000 worth of parts of rebuilding the electronics parts of these boilers. Okay, then you wanna lube any of the moving parts, hinges or anything else you wanna do. And then one of the other important things is the fire rope on the inside of the door. Uh, I've shown that in several videos. And then once you put in the new rope, you put a little silicone in there, put the fire rope in, and that holds the silicone in place. But once you're done with that, make sure you seal around the chimney on top of all your units. Now, some boilers, most of them, have the chimneys come right through the roof. 
what happens here is the, the moisture in the wood and everything else drip over the chimney and come down, pick up creosol as they're coming out of the chimney, and they drip down past the roof where the silicone bead is, and if it gets by that, it creates kind of an acid, and then it goes past the roof and sits on top of the barrel, which will rot the chimney right off your roof, uh, rot the chimney right off your wood boiler. And uh, this is a big problem with all makes and models because it's it's such a, uh, an acid with the moisture and the creosol, it creates a, a very aggressive acid which eats the steel quite rapidly. So once you've gotten all that done, uh, lighting the boiler is really quite simple. There's a couple things that a lot of people don't understand happen though, is if the water in the jacket is cold, let's say 60 degrees, and you're lighting a fire on the inside, that chamber is getting hot, but the water is still cold. So it's gonna give you a, uh, a condensation effect where it's like a glass of uh, cold water on a hot summer day. It'll actually start to drip on the inside of your barrel as your fire is getting started. So what I do, and here's the funny thing is, is I let this thing go out uh, since yesterday. I cleaned it out and I only had a handful of coals in there and I started prepping everything and it's relit again. So I'm gonna try to start this up because the units work so effectively. So excuse the smoke, we'll let it air out for a second. Okay, so as I said, I only had a few coals in there after I let the fire go out and it did ignite the fire while I was getting ready to do this video. So these fires start very easily. Um, but the reason why I wanted to show you this, and it's gonna be hard to see here, but after I cleaned out most of the ash, as I said, the condensation on a, on a boiler is just starting up, it drips down the side and it drips and it'll go into the bottom which will put out your fire. So what I tell people to do is put three or four or five logs down at the bottom so the condensation will hit that. You put your paper and then your kindling. What I like the best is pallets or small pieces of wood, uh, stuff with a lot of surface area, like uh, using round pieces is, is not as good. You wanna use small little pieces. Okay, so these are kind of my favorite pieces of kindling to use. Uh, you start with this kind of stuff, they're gonna light like a matchstick. And then you go into a bigger one and then into medium size and then into the larger ones. And as you can see how effective it is, it lights up almost with no effort at all. Once the fans turn on, I'll turn that off for the noise. Um, but once the fans turn on and put a little air down into the, the, the combustion area, as you can see this fire lit very quickly and uh, we're ready to go. And you just let it build and that's it. You, and then you're ready to go. Feed it once in the morning, once at night. It's just a managed fire. It runs better, it smokes a lot less. As you can see, I don't smoke much at all here at all. Um, and the better in condition of your wood and how well you season it, it just makes your life so much easier. Well, I hope this helps. And uh, let us know how you uh, like us and uh, please subscribe, the button's down below. And I'll put the links below and I'll also put that check sheet in there so you'll have a punch list of what you need to do every season. I hope this helps, happy heating. The, inside the fire chamber, you want to, um, it's smoking because I just try not to light it, but damn it. <laughs> the coal bed's still there. Yeah. Shit. Damn. These things work too good. Yeah, right.